I believe, is gold being remonetized, revalued. It's being looked at more as a currency across the globe. And all of these things, these, these things that people who, who supposedly know what's going on, who are married to the correlations between, you know, between interest rates and uh, all of the things that would make people say gold is oversold, the central banks don't give a crap. They don't care about interest rates and, and they don't care about any of the things oversold territory they want the gold. And they are looking at gold to me as wealth. And if you look at U.S. treasuries in historical context, if you look at other countries accepting another country's debt as an asset, it has about that big of a historical context. A coordinated effort among central banks worldwide to increase their gold holdings is signaling a potential revaluation on the horizon, particularly as the United States enters an election year. Andy Schechtman, CEO of Miles Franklin, contends that gold is undergoing a process of remonetization and revaluation globally. This trend, he argues, reflects central banks' growing interest in gold as a form of wealth, irrespective of traditional economic indicators like interest rates. Despite a decline in monthly purchases, gold continues to hold appeal for central banks. Krishan Gopal, senior analyst at the WGC, notes that the slower pace of accumulation has had minimal impact on the overall trend of central bank gold buying indicating sustained demand from emerging markets such as China and India. Gopal asserts that the year has commenced positively, reinforcing the enduring trend of gold purchasing. Sheckman further contends that rising interest rates are bullish for gold, signaling reduced demand for U.S. bonds and potentially necessitating the Federal Reserve to become the buyer of last resort. He anticipates that such a scenario could lead to significant inflationary pressures. Market expectations indicate a likelihood of more robust gold purchases by global central banks later this year, driving up prices to potentially new record highs. Central bank demand for gold has consistently surpassed 1,000 metric tons annually for the past two years. In conclusion, Sheckman emphasizes the gravity of the situation, highlighting the implications of gold accumulation by countries like China and Russia, coupled with demands for physical delivery, on global markets. Come along as we explore the valuable insights provided by Andy Schechtman. Don't miss out on our latest updates. Subscribe to our channel and activate notifications. Thank you for tuning in. Who in their right mind would buy treasuries of any, any duration whatsoever? And this will lead to debt monetization. And as rates continue to go higher, it's actually very bullish for gold. And normally it wouldn't be. Right, because there's a term in economics called Gibson's paradox, which is the inverse relationship between real interest rates and the price of gold. And you know, people are saying, "Well, geez, you know, it's crazy. Gold's gone up in the face of rising real interest rates." Well, it's really not crazy at all, because to me, it is indicative of the world central banks dumping treasuries, which makes interest rates go up, pushes down the value of the bonds. So. Who's buying the bonds? Well, ultimately, no one will want to buy any duration of a government that is broke, that is insolvent, that is addicted to spending, that is weaponizing the dollar, that is viewed as completely and totally hypocritical. And so in a normal environment, high interest rates are bad for gold because gold yields nothing. In comparison, now high rates are actually good for gold because, and I think very few people understand this, because what it to me means is, is that the world doesn't want our bonds anymore, and there's only one buyer left, and that would be the Fed. This leads to monetization of assets. It leads to monetization where the Fed has no choice but to be the buyer of last resort, to buy the bonds, um, and ultimately leads to massive inflation, which leads to higher rates. They're, they're caught. You see, that's what the world realizes. You see, I believe that... The price of gold is now being controlled more so in the East than it is in the West. Right now in China, in Shanghai, silver's priced three bucks higher than it is here. It's over 31, almost $31 an ounce in China and gold is about $80 higher. That's called arbitrage. So what the Chinese are doing is they've been using the suppression of metals that the West does against us by accumulating everything that isn't nailed down. And now they're slowly turning up the heat so that the traders who have access to the COMEX, to the LBMA, and to uh, the Shanghai Exchange will buy in the West and deliver in the East. And you're seeing that as they are 
17 months in a row have been accumulating. And there was just a report that came out, I think by BMO, uh, Bank of Montreal, where, where they came out and said, the numbers that we see coming out of China and Russia are for sure way less than what they really are. Well, no crap, duh. The bottom line is simply this, is that they are siphoning everything over. And I've said for a very long time that the Shanghai Exchange, the Moscow Exchange, the exchange in Dubai, these will become the real price setting mechanisms, not the fraudulent COMEX. You know, the COMEX is a situation, I think they made it because they thought to themselves, well, you know, if gold starts to take off, there are two ways we can satisfy the appetite for that. We can let the price of gold rise, a supply demand balance, or we can just create unlimited amounts of paper where we will sell a paper promise and the people don't even have to pay for it. They just have to have money in their margin account so they can pretend to pay for it. We can pretend to deliver it to them or give it to them. And that will keep a cap on the price of gold. It's all make believe. But what they never really thought about was that these countries would say, no, 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 no. We would like to stand for delivery. Thank you very much. And that's what you are seeing. You are seeing all of these these countries like China, like Russia, like Saudi Arabia, like all of India, all of these countries are accumulating gold and silver and they are standing for delivery, draining the world's exchanges. And I think that this is a situation that is going to get very, very, very serious. In the United States, government spending has surged to unprecedented levels, averaging over half a trillion dollars each month. Fiscal year 2024 has already seen the Biden administration exhaust $2.12 trillion in spending. This relentless spending spree has exacerbated the national debt, which now surpasses $34.5 trillion. Globally, government debt has soared to a staggering $82 trillion, ballooning by $20 trillion since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. Andy underscores the daunting debt crisis confronting the U.S. and questions the appeal of U.S. Treasuries in light of these circumstances. The Federal Reserve has responded to mounting inflationary pressures by implementing the most significant rate hikes in decades. The aim is to temper economic growth and prevent rapid increases in consumer prices. Andy expresses apprehension about the potential repercussions of escalating inflation and lowering interest rates, fearing they could precipitate severe economic challenges. These concerns underscore the delicate balance policymakers face in navigating the complexities of monetary policy amidst mounting debt and inflationary pressures. Let's get back to the interview. If we crank up the inflation spigot and we lower rates and we do all of these things that the, the Fed says they're going to do, we are going to see things really, 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 I think, start to blow up. And um, I don't think we've seen anything yet in, in terms of where the economy is going. But I, I think it's important to understand that the debt crisis that we have in front of us is looking more and more like a debt a, a death spiral to me. And, and I say that with the respect of who in their right mind is going to want to buy our treasuries of, of any duration. And this is why I think we're seeing the flow of gold move from west to east. Not only is it a transfer of wealth, a real transfer of wealth, but it's symbolic in my mind of just how profoundly the West has been brain dead in, in underestimating the significance of this. And what's really happening is that the these countries are selling our bonds and they are replacing the proceeds with gold. And if you look at, for example, um, why they would do this, look, I mean, we weaponize the dollar. You now have our Treasury Secretary advocating for not only the sanctioning of the Russian 300 plus billion in Forex assets, but also to confiscate them and use them to fund the Ukrainian war. And you cross that Rubicon of, of going from sanctioning to confiscation. It is a line once stepped over, you will never come back from. The entire Southern Hemisphere will never, ever, ever trust us again. And, and that's putting it mildly. And, and we are crossing that line. And so when you take a look at these countries, first of all, when you look at the bond market, since 2000, its average return has been dismal with low interest rates of the last 15 years. 
and you compare that to gold at 7.8% per year gain in the price of gold. But what it doesn't have is the risk of sanction and confiscation, the default risk. It doesn't have the risks associated with counterparty liability that the U.S. government has told the world, well, if you're not on our side of the table, if we don't align ideologically, well, we may just take your assets and kick you out of SWIFT. What you are seeing happen right in front of you, I believe, is gold being remonetized, revalued. It's being looked at more as a currency across the globe. And all of these things, these people who, who supposedly know what's going on, who are married to the correlations between, you know, between interest rates and, and um, uh, all of the things that would make people say gold is oversold, the central banks don't give a crap. They don't care about interest rates and and they don't care about any of the things oversold territory. They want the gold and they are looking at gold to me as wealth. And if you look at U.S. treasuries in historical context, if you look at other countries accepting another country's debt as an asset, it has about that big of a historical context. And when you look at gold, an asset that carries no counterparty liability is ha, is an asset that at the same time has no, no risk, if you will, um, based upon our actions as of late. I think things are just getting started. Investors are turning to safe haven assets amidst economic and geopolitical instability. Forecasts anticipate that ongoing moderation in inflation and jobs data will reinforce expectations of Federal Reserve rate cuts, prompting additional inflows from discretionary funds and ETF holders. Considering the Federal Reserve's efforts to combat inflation through significant rate hikes, what potential outcomes could arise from these monetary policy decisions? Share your thoughts in the comments section. If the video resonates with you, join our community by subscribing to our channel and enabling notifications with the bell icon. Thank you for being a part of our community.